Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial, where today we're going to take a look at this very sort of retro, outrun, uh, low poly. I'm not really quite sure how to describe it. It's got a lot of different characteristics of retro and outrun and low poly uh, stuff. Now, I also have to say, I, I saw this piece of artwork a long time ago on uh, Behance. I don't know what a long time ago is. It might be a couple months, maybe a couple years. But I made a sketch of it. I wish I had the link to the original artwork. I had a screenshot that I saved, but I cannot for the life of me find this. So if you're the original artist of this, I would love to hear from you so I can link your info here. Um, usually I try to link in artists, especially when we're doing tutorials that are based around their artwork. Um, but yeah, if, if I can find the, the link for this, this artist stuff, I'll make sure that I link them in here for sure. But we're going to take a look at how to create that effect and everything that goes along with it here in Adobe Illustrator today, right here, right now. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get into Illustrator and check this thing out. All right, well, here we are in Adobe Illustrator, and I've gone ahead and created a new document, 2,000 pixels wide by 2560 tall, and it's in the RGB mode. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here before we even get going is I'm going to shut off smart guides that I dearly love, uh, but in this particular case, I think they're going to be helpful for us not to have them on, at least for a little while. I'm going to drag in this sketch that I have, this PDF. I will make this uh, downloadable, probably as a JPEG. I'll include it here in the description of the video. And you can see here we have it. I'm going to go ahead and just hold down Shift. I'm going to scale it up so it's about the size of my document. Something like this works. It really doesn't need to be perfect, so we're going to push and pull stuff here a little bit. And what I'll do is I will go ahead and lock this layer. I'm going to name it just... Uh, Probably assets, because it's just kind of my background assets and stuff I'm referencing. I'm going to come down here to panel options as well. And just go with a nice big 75 pixel thumbnail so we can see it and, and really know what's going on with all of our different layers. I need to create a new layer here now that I locked up my assets layer. And the first thing we want to do is begin laying out just the outlines of our artwork. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of the fill here. We're just going to work with a stroke. And I'm going to double click on the stroke. And let's make it something you know ridiculous or very, very obvious. Uh, I'm going to go with just a very bright blue, so it's going to be easy to see what we're doing. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to click once. Remember, the width of our document is 2,000 pixels, and the height is 2,560. So I'm going to begin with that, and this will make up our background, because we're going to have sort of a sunset. Now we need to go over here to the Align panel. Your Align panel might not be here, so you might need to go Window, Align, and find your Align panel. I'm going to make sure that I'm aligning here, Align to. I'm going to make sure that I'm aligning to the artboard, not to a selection. And I'm going to go ahead and align the horizontal and vertical centers. There we go. In fact, I'm going to give this like a five-point stroke just so we can really see what's going on. See it there? Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my, well, rectangle tool again, actually. So let's go ahead and just drag something out, kind of, sort of like that. But obviously, it's all kind of mixed up and messed up. What we'll do is we'll come up here to the Properties panel, and the width I know only has to be 2,000 because our document's only that wide. And then the height here, we can probably push it a little bit bigger, maybe go like uh, 1075. Something, ooh, nope, 1075 is way too much. Let's just go, let's go 10, 1025. There we go, that's right around the horizon. And then we'll use the Align panel once again to make sure we align horizontal. But this time we're going to make sure we push this all the way to the bottom. So align, vertical, bottom. There we go. So that's in place. That's our foreground. Next, we'll grab the Ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down Shift. And I'm just going to drag out a nice ellipse. And again, I'm just following my sketch here. Um, and again, like I said, this was a sketch where I was, I think I straight up traced it uh, from this particular artist. So I'm going to go with a little sun action that's right about there. That's probably good. Don't worry about all this stuff, you know, hanging out everywhere. We're going to clean all this up in a moment. After I do all this, I want to take my pen tool and I want to begin tracing the tr kind of each element of the tree, the trunk and the main leaves. So I'm going to zoom in just a touch here. And I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'll begin right up here. I'll click once, hold down shift, come straight down the trunk. And again, it does absolutely does not have to be perfect. You can add a little bit of your own sort of flavor to this, if you will. I'm just going to try to follow my lines as best as possible and give myself a nice bit of tree trunk to work with that'll be hidden by the leaf. So that's why I'm kind of going way up there. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I probably should begin with the leaves in the front first. So I'm going to start with this leaf and I'll just... You know, the pen tool is perfect because it's just straight lines, right? And as long as it's relatively close to what we've got, it's going to work. So just come through here. And now you can see I've got this leaf that would be underneath. So I'll begin out here on the point, right? So I'll make the lines that I can see. And then I'll just like pretend the leaf goes back to there or something. And I'll bring it out this way. Oh, how should I do this? I'll bring it out this way and then like that and like that and like that. So you can just, you know, let your imagination kind of go wild for some of that. And I'm going to take this leaf here, and it's going to pass underneath this leaf. That's why I'm not concerned about the lines. We're going to kind of stack everything in its own proper order when the time comes. So I'm not really concerned about that. I can get this like folded over looking leaf up here. 
That'll be cool. Go ahead and grab that. Bing. Chop back. I'm not going to worry about that little line. We'll, we'll take care of that later. And this probably should go just like that. And I'm, I'll probably just speed up the video here so you'll be watching me just in a sped up version of this. Just kind of flying through and creating the rest of this illustration and getting these paths exactly as we need them so we can go ahead and create our own low poly palm tree. You can see, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It looks really complex, but we're really just tracing those lines that we had. Now, one thing I should have done, I'm just going to select all of these paths, especially the ones in the middle here. Now it's going to select all the shapes for me. Eh, you know what? We'll go ahead and select all the shapes. I'm going to come over here and click on Stroke, and I just want to make sure that the corner caps are not points, but rather the rounded joint. It's just going to give us a better, smoother look for this particular application, so I'm going to roll with that. So now when I open up layer two here, you can see it contains all these different paths that we just drew. I'm going to begin with the path in the back first, and let's kind of layer our color and all of our detail and texture, bring it from the, the background all the way to the foreground. So here we are with our rectangle, and I want to get rid of the stroke, and we're going to give this a fill, but we're going to click on the gradient swatch because we want to fill this with a gradient. It looks terrible. Don't worry. We're going to fix that here in just a moment. Let's set the gradient angle to negative 85 degrees first and foremost, and then the white color stop, we want to select that, come up here to our color panel, and I'm going to hit the little flyout menu, choose RGB, because I can punch in a custom hexadecimal code here. And the hex code I want is C84298. So you can see it's just this very pink color. And actually, you know what? We want this pink color as our second color stop. So I'm going to drag that color stop over. I'm missing a color here. I'm going to select this first color stop. Let's try adding something that's a little bit, uh, a little different here. So we're going to go 3374BA uh, for more of this kind of blue that can transition into this pinkish color. Uh, and then for our final color stop over here on the right, uh, let's go ahead and once more go RGB. And in the hex code for this, we're going to go, we'll go something brighter here, F791, uh, let's go 1E. So we get this nice orange here. And what I'm going to do is the pink slider, I'm going to shift it over uh, until it's right around 25% location. And the orange slider, I'm going to shift it up uh, until it's around, you know, round about the 60% location, just like that. So you can see it's going to give us this really cool sort of, you know, I don't know, outrun style backdrop uh, that I think is pretty neat. Now it looks like I may have dragged us out of alignment, but I bet you that white we're seeing around there is just overlap from our sketch. And sure enough, if I shut the sketch off temporarily, it goes away. We're going to be bringing the sketch back, I think, in a moment, so I want to leave it there for now. Uh, let's go ahead and focus on our rectangle down here and build out our foreground. So once more, select the stroke over here in the bottom of your toolbar. Just set that to none to get rid of it. And then we'll give this a gradient as well. Now we don't want the same gradient, but don't worry. We can go ahead and just drag one of these color stops off and just repurpose what we've got here. I'm going to set this to a straight negative 90 to just go one color straight to the other, just top to bottom like that. The left color stop, I'm going to select it, and we're going to change the hex code. We'll change it to uh, 23CCFF. Uh, so you can see a very, very bright blue, and I think I'll drag this color stop inward a little bit. Let's go to like around 15% location-wise. That looks about right. We'll select the right color stop here, and the hex code for this is going to be, uh, let's go 2161CA. It's going to be more of a darker blue. And what I'm going to do here, well, I think I'll just leave that at 100% actually. Let's leave that kind of like that. So this is kind of going to be our foreground. We've got our background. We're, we're introducing some bright colors here, but we're having fun while we're doing it. Let's grab the big ellipse. Once more, I'm going to dump the stroke by hitting the little slash icon, select the fill, go ahead and throw a gradient into it. We're going to customize the gradient here in just a second, so no sweat. We're going to first and foremost set the gradient to the same angle as the sky. So we're going to go negative 85 degrees. And I'm going to select the left color stop here. And the hex code is going to change to, uh, let's go F5, E2, there's two, zero 02. So that's kind of this yellowish. It almost looks green when paired with the blue, but let's get rid of that blue and see how it looks. Uh, let's go ahead and double tap the hex code for this blue stop over here on the right. And this one's going to be uh, F0. We're going to go 50 and finish it off with a good old 69. There we go. Now you can see how it just looks a lot warmer. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to bump the yellow location up to around you know, 15 or so, or at 16, whatever, who's counting? I guess I'm counting, technically. And then let's push the pink back to around 75, 80, something like that. I think that looks good. Now, of course, this looks funky because it's showing up in front of our foreground, so we probably want to select this. We can right-click on it, choose Arrange, and we could choose Send Backward, not Send to the Back. That'll put it behind the background, but if we should choose Send Backward, you can see it just sends it back one layer. So this essentially moves the foreground in front of it, and now we have sort of a proper little sun floating in our our uh, artistic sky. Now before we go any further, let's select that foreground once more. Let's copy it, Command or Control C, and paste it in front, which essentially pastes in place, Command or Control F. You can see we have a duplicate of it. I'm going to come over to my swatches panel right here, and I'm going to choose the simple black to white gradient. Black to white, voila. I may extend the black a little bit. 
maybe a little bit more. I'm dragging that top diamond. We're not moving the actual color stops, just kind of extending its range a little bit. And then what I'll do is go effect, uh, texture, there's texture, and choose grain. And here from this dialog box, the grain we want is this stippled looking grain. Now we can play with the intensity, but I think an intensity, you know, somewhere between 20, 25 and 30 is going to work great. Contrast, we can try bumping that up and see what it looks like. Sometimes high contrast grain actually looks pretty good. You may need to, well, that's too much contrast. You may need to reduce or increase the intensity and see what you get. You know, we'll push the intensity back a little bit. Let's go 10 on the intensity and 60 on the contrast and go ahead and hit OK. I think that'll look pretty good. And it looks pretty bad, but we're going to make it look good. I knew this was going to happen, by the way, um, because we need to finish the effect by setting it to the blend mode, by the way, in the transparency panel, which if you don't have window transparency right there, uh, you're going to go ahead and set this to multiply. And we'll also reduce the opacity to something like 50%. We might have to go a little bit lower, but I think in this case, 50% will probably work for us just fine. All right, let's now create a series of lines here above our above our little foreground. So let's grab the line tool right here. And I'm going to just drag a line straight across, holding down my shift key, just like that. That's perfect. Now, it's not. there's no fill or stroke associated with it, as we see indicated here. So I'm going to select stroke. And let's give this uh, let's give this a specific color. Let's go something bright. Let's go F5, uh, E2, uh, 0, 2. Can hit tab. You can see it's going to be this nice yellow. I'm going to hit OK. Great. And I'm going to increase the size of the stroke up here on my properties panel. I'm going to go, instead of one point, we're going to go 10 points. So it's going to be nice and fat up there. Then I'm going to grab my select uh, arrow, my selection tool. And I'm going to duplicate this by holding down my alt or option key and holding down shift and dragging out a copy. And just pulling it down to, I don't know, roundabout right there. And we're going to set the stroke of this one to two points. Now what we'll do is select both of these stroked lines and we'll go object, blend. I'm going to choose blend options. We're going to choose from spacing specified steps. I'm going to choose four for my specified steps and hit OK. And then we'll go object, blend. We still have these two lines selected and choose blend. If I can get it, there we go, blend and make. And you can see this is going to give us a perfect series of just straight lines going from the fatter line to the thinner line. Looks good. Now I want to select this blend of lines and right now it's going to be way up here at the top of our panel. I want to bring this down so it's just on top of the foreground so we don't lose track of it. The hotkey for arranging, if I right click and go to arrange, you can see send backward. It's the command and left square bracket key. On the PC, this would be the control and square bracket key. Just as a little FYI. And you can see, as I do this, just going to move itself right down my layers panel. I'll kind of track the progress of it. Where is it? Here he is coming in for his landing. Boom. Just like that. And once we have this, we're going to set this to the blend mode of overlay. That's going to allow it to really strongly interact with that bright blue behind it. And we obviously don't want the, the lines hanging off the edge of our artwork. So we'll select that blend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask to it. So here in the transparency panel, we can double tap this little thumbnail and that's going to create a filled layer mask. That's totally fine. Let's grab the ellipse tool here and just drag out an ellipse, eh, maybe about maybe about that big, a little bit wider than our sun. We're going to get rid of the stroke on this ellipse. This is our mask we're now working in. See how the layers panel has changed? We're working in this black mask. The stuff in here that's white will show through and you can see the lines have completely disappeared. Why? Because our mask is solid black. If we go ahead and just give this a fill of white, only the lines within our circle will reappear, right? Voila. But that doesn't look very good because it's got the really hard edges. Nah, actually, hard edges aren't too bad with this design, but I think I want them to be a little bit uh, faded. So I'm going to go ahead and change the fill to a gradient, and I'm going to go with not the linear, but rather the radial gradient. And then I'm just going to begin adjusting this. So I want more of the, the lines to be showing. So I'm going to drag the diamond over to inc increase the power of the white. And then I'm going to slide the black over. Now you can see how the lines never quite entirely fade away. That's because this black is not a true black. You can see how it's not getting all the way back down, all the way uh, down to those really solid blacks. There we go. Now, now we've got some fading action going on, just like that, looking good. All right, once we're done creating this mask, we can go ahead and just click on the regular thumbnail and resume our normal editing process. So at this point, we want to go ahead and turn on our smart guides again by going view, smart guides, turn them on. And we're going to, I'm going to lock up anything in the background that we've created already. So just turn on the locks in the layers panel for all these objects, all the way up to the blend of lines. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trace out the trunk and we're going to do it with the leaves as well. But I'm going to begin with the trunk because, hey, the trunk is cool. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and let's go ahead and choose our stroke color. So this is going to be important because it's, it's going to be the stroke color we roll with. We can always change it later, but we just want it to be something very visible. So the stroke is going to be uh, 29 E6 
FF. So this is a very, very light, bright blue. I'm going to hit OK for that. And I'm going to bump the stroke weight up to three points. And I'm going to make sure that the cap is a rounded join, not the, not the corner straight joint. I also want to give these shapes a fill color. And that fill color is going to be uh, 2470 BC. So it's just kind of like a, a medium cobalty looking blue. We'll hit OK there. And now with Smart Guides turned on, we can hover over. You can see there it's telling me, yep, that's an anchor point. So I can click there. I can draw all the way down, get down to the next anchor point. Great. And what I can do is just begin creating my design. So I can say, yep, intersect with the path. There we go. There's my first shape. Then I can hold down Shift as I hover over an anchor point. That's going to allow me to create a totally new path. And I can just go ahead and start drawing out this uh, tree trunk. Once I've done that, hold down shift here at the point. Let's go ahead and bend the tree trunk this way. And voila, just like that. Hold down shift once more. And let's go ahead and create the tree trunk this way. I really want to make sure that I'm hovering. You can see when it's, when it's going to tell me, yep, you're at an anchor point. That's going to just ensure that everything lines up absolutely perfectly. And we just get this really cool looking tree trunk now. And at this point, you can hover over this and select. You're going to have all your new shapes up here at the top. But remember, we have that tree trunk path. We technically don't need that anymore. And you really don't want it to be there because it's going to, it could potentially show a little bit outside of the shapes that you're drawing. And that's going to be no good. So that I would probably take at this point and just drag it to the garbage. What I would do with the trunk, I would probably grab the trunk and hit Command or Control G, group it together. And if you're uh, an organization freak, you could just give it a name, trunk. And there we go. We know there is our low poly trunk. We're going to go in later and adjust the, the brightness of the colors and uh, you know add some depth and dimension to this as well. But I'm going to go ahead really, really quickly. Well, you know what? Let's do one of the leaves together. And then I'm just going to speed through the rest of the leaves. And then we'll talk about coloring and shading. So let's take the pen tool. Let's go with this foreground leaf here. So there's an anchor. What I like to do with the leaves is actually not begin at the back. I like to begin at the front because the, the idea is I want to split the leaf in half with my shapes. So just watch this. I'm going to begin at the anchor and I'm going to say, look, come back to here first and then find a, the anchor point joint in the edge. There we go. They, all of these shapes should be triangles. So we have a perfect triangle. Great. I'm going to hold down shift. Let's draw out another triangle this way. Let's come across. Boom, just like that. So this middle line, remember, this is sort of going to have to come all the way back to the rearmost point in the leaf if we want this to be a really nice, convincing looking leaf. Hold down Shift. Let's join this over here. Let's go this way. And boom. Then I'll go ahead, hold down Shift. Let's bring this up to about here. And then we'll join this across. See, we're just making triangle after triangle after triangle. I'm going to bring this right up to here. Voila. Always, of course, make sure you join it off. Hold down Shift. I'm going to make this completing triangle here. Great. Now, right now we have this line and this line here that are kind of making a B line to the back part of the leaf. So I'm going to hold down shift here. Let's join this little triangle or make this little triangle, I should say. Hold down shift again. Come off of that anchor point, And now we're going to make the, the leap to the back of the leaf, if you will. There we go. And then finally, just create the last little triangle cell that you need, just like that. And we have our first leaf. And we can go ahead and add, you know, just brighten or darken different cells of color. And we'll add some dimension to this. Now, we're not going to do that right away. What you're seeing is me speeding through and finishing off all of the low poly artwork for the rest of these leaves to get us into a position where we can go ahead and begin doing our coloring and shading. And just like that, I can just zoom out here and I can begin turning all these leaves back on. We can work on getting all of the stacking order correct now as well because the leaves have some body to them. I'm just going to make sure I, yep, I got them all here. Cool. So obviously the trunk should be in the back. This leaf one, this guy here who's really should be up front, this is the leaf that I want all the way up front. Of course, I can't select it because I locked that layer. I'm going to collapse properties for a second to make this a little easier to see what's going on here. I'm going to select leaf number one. We'll right click on him. We'll choose a range and we'll bring him all the way to the front because this one, this one should be all the way up front. And I think this leaf right here should be second. So we'll right click, arrange, and we'll bring this guy, well, not quite to the front, I guess. We've got to bring him back to the front now. Arrange, bring to front. There we go. So those two leaves definitely should be in the front. This leaf should be behind that. That's great. Now over here, we need to, we need to do some housekeeping, I think. This leaf should be in front of that leaf. So let's hit Command or Control and the right square bracket key just until we see it pop up above it. So there we go. Now that's popped up above it. And then this little guy peeking out, he should, of course, be all the way in the back because just the little tip is peeking out. So the right side of the tree is stacked the way it should be. This leaf should just be kind of hanging out. They actually select that, maybe nudge it downward a little bit. 
bring it down, bring it a little bit closer, just something kind of like that. So it's overlapping the leaf. That looks cool. And then this one here should be underneath this leaf. So let's select that. Hold down the Commander Control key and hit the left square bracket key until it moves just like it should. So now let's go ahead and begin the shading process here. So we have all the stuff grouped up, so we can't grab anything just using our regular selection tool. We need to go with the direct selection tool. I'll show you how I do this. Let's unlock the trunk. Let's begin with the trunk. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. We still want to see the whole tree in context, and I'm going to hit the letter A, which gives me my direct selection tool. I'm going to select this guy right here, and what we can do is we could use the RGB sliders, but I find it a little easier to go HSB because we have a brightness slider. So we can just say, yep, make that one a little bit darker, and make this one a little darker, but not quite as dark as the one next to it. And then maybe like this side of the tree, we'll make this one a bit darker. So kind of something like that. We just change the color, we add some shape to it, looks good. Now what we can do is begin changing up our, our leaves. So I'll go with this guy in the front. Let's go like this front, the front leaf here. We'll make that, we'll actually make that relatively dark. And then this one, the one next to it as well, we'll make a little bit darker. Again, it should almost feel like the, that part of the leaf is bending under. And then up here, we'll darken this one a little bit. And maybe this one back here will darken just a smidge. And maybe even this one will darken just, just a really, really little bit. Just to add some variation there. Now for the leaf right behind it, let's select this little cell. Let's darken that up. Let's darken this up as well. Just a little bit. Oops, the wrong one. Let's make sure we select the right, the right shape. There we go, that shape. Voila. I should probably darken the, the bit here in front just a little more just for the variation. Make sure it's really set off well. I'm going to select both of these shapes. So if I select one, hold down shift and select another, I can select multiple shapes. I'm going to darken both of these. Whoop, that's a little much. Kind of something like that. And now you can see I'm just going to go through this at sort of hyper speed. I'm going to select the shapes that need to be darkened and just go ahead and darken them and build up a little bit of depth here in my, my little low poly, retro futuristic, whatever you want to call it, illustration. It's a bunch of fun. And there we have it. You can see just adding that adds so much to it. In fact, I think I'm going to make this one a little bit darker here because sometimes you just look at it and you realize, you know what? That needs to have a little bit more shape and oomph to it. So there we go. We do that. Um, and now I think the last thing I'm going to do here before I, before I kind of ship this off and maybe we'll, we'll add a little grain or maybe we'll take it over to Photoshop, bump all the colors up and add the grain there because that's really where you should be adding grain anyway. But let's go ahead and grab our line tool once again. I'm going to get rid of my fill color. In fact, I'll swap my fill and my stroke because I want it to be dark and I'm just going to get rid of the fill. So we're going to go with this little uh, stroke and I'm going to make it about as wide as the base of the tree trunk. And I'm going to open up my properties panel and we're going to make this about 10 points. So it's going to be kind of nice and thick down here. And I'm going to nudge it so it's just off the tree trunk right about there. Hold down the alter option key and drag a copy of it straight down to about, I don't know, right about there. And then hold down your alter option key. And we want to try to stretch this out. Maybe holding down alter option is not the best way to do this here. So let's just come up here to our height and we'll make this, remember our document's 2,000 pixels wide. So let's go like 1750 wide. We'll make it nice, nice and wide, something like that. And this one, the stroke is going to be reduced to one. So we're going to go very narrow on the stroke to the thick stroke. And we're going to go object. Remember how we created a blend before? But we need more than uh, four steps or six steps or whatever we did. Let's go like 25, something like that. Hit OK. And then we're going to go object and choose blend and choose to make the blend. Now with this blend, we'll go object and we'll choose to expand it. Now, we're only going to expand the object. It's a blend object, not the fill or the stroke. So I'm going to hit OK, and it's all grouped together. Um, what we'll do just temporarily is we'll ungroup this. So I'm going to hit Command-Shift-G. That will be Control-Shift-G on the PC. That's going to ungroup. And now I'm going to zoom in. We can grab these lines now and begin just shifting them. So I want to kind of randomize them a little bit because this is sort of supposed to be kind of the... Uh, the reflection of the tree in what would be this sort of watery surface which it is sitting on. So you can see we're just going to drag these guys around. And they can really go any which way. I'll, I'll probably speed the video up here just so you don't have to sit here and painstakingly watch me go through every little step and detail like this. And now I'll just drag a selection over them to grab them all again and regroup them by hitting Command or Control G. I'm going to set this group of strokes. I'm going to set it uh, to the, well, not Pathfinder. I want the transparency panel. There it is. I'm going to set this to the blend mode of overlay. And I need to drag this down beneath the grain because right now you can see how it's almost like highlighting the grain. It just interacts with the grain differently when it's on top of it. So I'm going to select this and we're going to use that hotkey command or the, and excuse me, command or control and the left bracket key. And we're going to nudge this down. Let's move down our layers panel and just wait for its arrival. Get through all these open paths. Well, not really open paths. They're closed, but they don't have a fill, so they appear to be open. And there we go. We got it down beneath. This is our grain layer here. 
There's our reflection. And you can see it just cha it just changes it a little bit. It makes it look a little bit different. So that's cool. And one more thing we can do here is grab this group. Let's zoom in on it a little bit. You can see how it's just this very harsh edge. We could go ahead and just choose stroke and choose to cap it with a little round cap, just like that. Maybe it'll make it look a little bit more organic. At the very least, it'll match the round corners we already have in the design. But it's, you know, it's water. Water is not like straight and sharp edged or anything like that. Let's move all the way down, shut off that underlying sketch and this is our sketch so what i can do now is select this entire layer here well let's let's just make sure nothing is locked up because i think we still have the background and and whatnot locked up let's unlock all that stuff including this blend layer we can go ahead and just select the overall layer we could group this together commander control g and there we go we have it in a group it's kind of already grouped under the layer but eh, whatever we'll do it there and let's come over here and go up to window asset export here and what i'll do is i'll drag this group into this panel you can see because it's a group, it's going to export as one giant asset, which is exactly what I want. I don't need all these multiple versions of PNG and, and SVG and all that stuff. So I'll choose to go ahead and export this. And what I'll do is I'll just save it right here to my desktop. There we go. And if I bump out to my desktop, sure enough, there's a PNG. And that is my document. Now, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop real quick. So here in Photoshop, probably the first thing we should do is add some grain to it. So I'll just right click. I'll convert this to a smart object. And then I'll throw it out to the Camera Raw Editor using Camera Raw Filter. And here in the Camera Raw Editor, we're going to come over here to the Effects, and here I've got Grain. So it's a good idea to just zoom into 100% so you can just make sure you're, you're really seeing what you're getting here. Maybe we'll increase the size a little bit and the roughness. We probably need to take the amount down. You know what? Maybe I don't want it to be quite that rough. Eh, a little rougher than 37. Reduce the size a little bit. Maybe increase the amount just a little. We don't want to go too crazy with it, but we want it to be there. And then I'll hit OK. And now we can like throw a, maybe a color balance over this. Let's see what works better. If we add a little blue, maybe add a little magenta, add some red to it in the midtones. We'll go over to the highlights. What works good for the highlights? A little yellow. Eh, you know, actually, maybe a little blue works good for the highlights. A little magenta in the highlights. You know, a little red really add to the pinkness. Although cyan really makes it super blue. Let's go to the shadows. What works good? Blue. Yeah, I think a little blue in the shadows. A little magenta in the shadows. A little red. And you're gonna see this really just it just it takes all those colors and just like super intensifies them very very quickly. And then, of course, here from Photoshop, you could save it out wherever you want. Or if you if you just don't want to intensify the colors, that's totally fine as well. You can hang out with your artwork here in Illustrator. It looks great. It's ready to, to re ready to rock and roll. You can export it, save it out as whatever kind of image you like. All right. So you can see it was a little bit of a process. Now, speaking of process, if you completed the process and you made this piece of artwork, I would love to see it. Make sure you upload it to Instagram and uh, tag me in it. Tag me in the image and I'll, I'll, it'll come into my tagged images section of Instagram. I'll make sure I see it. I comment, give you a little love. And uh, yeah, it's just cool to see what people make. Or you can also you can join our uh, Discord server, which the URL is popping up on screen here. Feel free, of course, to jump into the illustration and graphic design section of Discord and share it with the world there and let everybody see the awesome stuff you've created. We're a friendly bunch over there. We'd love to have you. And also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Uh, <clears throat> and also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel right here and right now before you forget about it. So you never miss any Adobe Illustrator or graphic design related tutorials in the past, present, or future. Guys, for working with this low poly, futuristic, retro, outrun style, what do you want to call it? Palm tree, sunrise, reflection type effect here in Adobe Illustrator. That's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.